Rufus to you all. Let's clarify one thing before we get into the show. I'm not doing a divorce thing. We have had the announcement of a new baby joining the world, a new person, a wedding, a proposal put forward through drama time. I am not doing divorce. I am not doing fucking, I'm just letting you know your mother's dead either. That's not happening. No chance. No way. No. Just a flat no. That is all that's, I'm not a pussy. I'm not a pussy. No, don't be like that. I'm not a coward. I'm not a pussy. I'm not dealing with that, okay? I don't need to be like, oh, great. I just read this story and now you're getting divorced, right? <laughs> I don't want to do that. No divorce stories, no way. I'm not being a coward. I hope a coward, a coward. I am not going to be a coward. Good afternoon, every single one of you here. What another ridiculous week it has been. I've done advertisements for advertisements for Blizzard for 9.1, which is a first for me. It was very, very cool to do. Very interesting. So hopefully you'll be seeing that around and not cringing the shit out of yourselves because you know it's me. Uh, we have piloted the starship Aegis through many calamities and explosions and fires and all that kind of stuff. We have done that this week and 9.1 is going to land with us next week. It's happening, finally. We've got weapons that are all bo broken and bugged. That's a few days <laughs> before the patch comes. We've got a lot of broken weapons to deal with. But that's Blizzard to deal with. Not us, right? We're not going to deal with that. We're not going to do that. And we did, in fact, sail the Seven Seas, or the Sea of Thieves, as we did the Captain Jack Sparrow expansion for Sea of Thieves, which was hilarious fun. Uh, it was great to have a full crew going on that adventure with us as we solved the mysteries of Captain Jack. On our wonderful galleon, which definitely did not sink. It didn't sink, actually, now I think about it. We never sunk once, because we're pro gamers. Mythic, pl mythic, mythic gamers traveling the oceans. So we did a good job. We've done a pretty successful job this week, and next week is going to be even busier, so it should be a ton of fun. I have in front of me some stories that our wonderful Methuselah, Lady Bex, has been through and has tagged for me she tags them now because they eventually end up of course on our website and on spotify and it makes them easier for you to find in the future and it makes it all so easy now the story i'm about to read to you comes with these tags this is a drunken rant i think we should start charging psychology fees bro are you okay do you need a hug mike i think you should play clown music to set the ambience okay now, apparently, from what I can get from this, I have no idea what's in the story. Apparently, somebody recognized a story that we told in 2017. Is that correct, Bex? 2017. And he's really pissed off about what we said all the way, all um, like, you know, years ago. <laughs> all that time ago. Uh, so, uh... You got yourself all riled up from 2017. So we'll see how this goes. It is guild versus assholes. So we will put a link in the chat because, uh, or you can probably, you can't, like I said, you can find it on our website where all the stories are uh, tagged and split up and everything for everybody. You can find it on preachgaming.com. Uh, you'll find all that. Um, okay, apparently we do need to resort to a name from all the way back in 2017. Weird Pumpkin. Uh, who was the author of the previous story all the way back then. We have Keenan, who should join us as, as uh, a tank, and Drathor, or Drathor, who is our co-raid leader, all those kind of things. Thank you very much, Bex. Yes, so that is the, Bex has just linked the story we're referencing. I'll try and remember to put it in the YouTube comments. Sorry, YouTubers, just YouTube guys, YouTube guys, we fucking love you. We really do. Tweet me if I forget, because it's Friday, and I'm immediately leaving here to have my cheat meal of the week, and I cannot fucking wait. Because I have had nothing but porridge, omelettes, and turkey for six days, man. And I've got chippy waiting for me. Oh shit, I've not changed the alerts because I'm absolute actual human garbage. And lame one's now got all the evidence he needs to be a right prick to me oh, and send me twatty sir. stuff. Fixed. Okay, fixed. I fixed it immediately. Okay. <clears throat> Let's go down this uh, rabbit hole, friends. I'm I'm right along with you. Holler Preacher, and of course, the Guardian of Drama, Miss Bex. Ugh, lady of Surprise and Entertainment. Don't like that. I recently watched a drama time, and I recognized the story. The story was titled The Guild vs. Arseholes. A story about loot whores in a guild with an honestly convoluted loot system. Not that we've never seen one of those on drama time before, have we, fellas? The story was familiar because 
The story was about my guild. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, a note from Bex. This story contains some of the most awful loot rules you have ever seen. Uh, so as a reminder, okay, so we've had some pretty bad... We've had manifestos. We've had all kinds of crazy nonsense. We've had some weird shit on Drama Time. But apparently this was one of the, t the tippy-top mental loot systems. Here's a reminder and a refresher for us all, because I need one too. Our loot system had three ranks within the guild. Trial, Member, and Raider. Two Raid Knights makes you go up that rank permanently. Need over Greed taking rank into account. Ranks go back after the weekly reset. So if I am a Raider rank but get two pieces of loot, I go back to Trial on the next reset and I need to work to come back to Raider rank. <laughs> Fucking mental. What is wrong with you? What the fuck is wrong with you? Oh my god. A real life example of this being when I, an officer, rolled need on a trinket. However, since I got a tear piece from the previous boss, I was dropped from officer to member rank. So I, oh, I dropped, because I got tear from the previous boss, I was dropped to member rank. So I lost it to someone who was at the raider rank. I got the trinket the next week due to no other raider rank members needing this trinket. You make it sound like it makes sense. That's why I fucking hate you, right? You make this sound like it's all perfectly logical. And it's not. Like, at all. In any way, shape, or form. Like, you're actually trolling. You're hard trolling me. This system that we had in place led to an 18-year-old telling us that they were upset because they lost out on a downgrade trinket because our trank wanted the crit and strength buff. And how they understood why we do it because 10 years ago, when they were 8 years old, they were a raid leader and guild leader in vanilla. <laughs> okay, so the experience of an 8 year old raid leader, not, not ideal either. They left the guild because of this and came back later and got to steal a 4 piece bonus. Because Drathor wasn't paying attention to the ranking system. Really? Really? He couldn't keep up with people changing rank mid-raid on every boss. Weird. Then a paladin who had an ego because he was in a mythic team before us tried blaming obvious healer issues on DPS or tanks when it was obvious that it had to be a healer issue because having weird pumpkin go healer when the paladin rage quit like a teenage girl led to the boss dying. The paladin, oh my god, that paladin actually saw the drama time not long after it was uploaded to YouTube due to a random sharing it in Discord and he had hit, quit the game entirely in BFA according to his friend okay so now we're learning that drama time does spread its wings and its tentacles far and wide aye, 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 aye. however today today however i do not bring a story of loot system dramas or egos well no paladin egos i bring you the story of how our once ahead of the curves ahead of the curve team who would do a couple of mythic bosses each tier has fallen from god and is now a guild that can't even kill Dark Vein. I assume that's Dark Vein normal. That kind of sucks. Or is that heroic? It might be heroic. So you used to spank a couple of mythic bosses. Now we can't do heroic Dark Vein. Okay. That's quite the fall. That's quite the fall. This change is not 100% due to Keenan. So Keenan is, just a reminder, Keenan is the tank. Okay, we've not seen Keenan mentioned before, but it's, 100%, it's not 100% due to Keenan. But it can't be stressed enough that he, the tank Keenan, was the catalyst for it going this far. The roots of this problem begin in Legion. Jesus Christ, we're going all the way back to Legion. <laughs> Two expansions ago where we started to fail. It actually started in Legion, where one of our tanks was upset because a co-leader tank told him to play better on heroic Odin. He decided to stop communicating with the other tank mid-pull and wiped us. The next day, an officer had approached him in the DM and told him that we can't have tanks acting like that in the middle of pulls and we will not be using him as a tank, but he is welcome to come and heal like he used to if it would help him get over whatever his problem was. That tank then screenshotted the message and posted it in Discord calling our raid team Cuba. <laughs> <laughs> and that the officers are Castro. Jesus Christ. I don't think I've ever heard someone rage that way. 
that this raid team is like Cuba and you're acting like Castro? And that's, I mean, that's kind of what happened to Hitler. I thought we were all, Hitler was the go-to, no? Now we're, we're doing Castro. He was quickly replaced and our raid carried on until the healing paladin blew up because he, we asked him to spend 300 gold on consumables for what was not farm content. Unless you count a boss that you only killed twice, both with five wipes minimum as farm. Ooh, uh, I mean, it should be farming it, right? But why is he not using consumables in raids? What the f Fuck you, man. <sighs> Who's not using consumables on raid night? What are you doing? You of course use consumables on farm for the dem logs. Them logs ain't gonna pass themselves. You know what I mean? Them logs ain't gonna just happen. You need to pump. You need to pump your numbers up. We were clearing the Legion raids and we got to Heroic Antorus before we had to replace a tank again. And this time, Weird Pumpkin stepped up even though he hated tanking. He tanked for us until the last three bosses where he had to leave because he only had satellite internet. Which, while he made it work on Varamathras, it wouldn't work later. In comes Keenan, An alcoholic tank who we end up keeping. Smart. Smart, big choices, big choices. I see, I see. In terms of skill, he wasn't truly bad and even tanked for us on Heroic Argus. The real problem came in Battle for Azeroth where our raiders had started to slack. There was a joke in our guild. The joke of Weird Pumpkin telling Drathor to come prepared to raid because Drathor was a raid leader wasn't even really a joke because out of the three of us, she was and is the only one that doesn't run Mythic Plus or even Mythic Zeros at the beginning of the expansion. I think only ran them during the weekly events if others were on to carry her. I don't think she actually had a legendary item until the last week. Because when me and one of our healers were going to do Torghast on our alts, she offered to come, but she had only unlocked layer 3. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. You can't even be asked to get a single legendary. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I'm not doing it. I can't do it. I'm not. I can't. Torghast, like, no way, man. I can't even get a single legendary. I'm not even. Here's, here's my dumbass doing fucking every Lego and 12 characters. Our girl can't even be fucking bothered to get a single legendary. Yeah, co-leader. I can't blame them. I mean, not getting one legendary is kind of tragic, right? We would have a DPS requirement, but even the minimum would require her to be benched. Oh, We actually have Keenan, thanks to, uh, thanks to thank for some of our recruits, even though they are very geared. Some still pull less than 3k DPS in heroic fights. Drathor also has an issue where mid-raid... She will start talking about something completely random during pulls. And when someone explains the fight, she starts talking, talking over them. But she's bored. <laughs> she's the co-leader. This is giga boring, bro. I need some new shoes, though. <laughs> she would even raise her voice. And then going, well, everyone just calm down. Honestly, the best parts are where someone talks louder than her or when she, she said something about wanting to get more drugs during Artificer Progress. What is your guild? How do you guys live this way? Oh, man, I need some more drugs. I mean, it's Artificer, so there's that. Now I can kind of see where she's coming from. <clears throat> it got to the point where Weird Pumpkin... Keyed up and said to her, Drathor, if you just focus for this one boss, I will personally go and buy you drugs. She then sent multiple people whispers about how she was in a bad place and didn't want teasing about her drug use and then got mad when I suggested that she take the night off. What is this guild? What is going on? What the fuck is going on here, man? Is this just Artificer doing this? How to motivate your raid? Dude, Nathria though, right? Bruh. The players our boy Keenan had recruited included a healer that bitched about carrying others but can't stick to a single main and tried getting away with a 190 item level healer being brought to Heroic Sludge Fist. Their argument for this was, <laughs> I got a 90% percentile on this for this spec on other bosses. <laughs> there it is. There it is. <laughs> Until I showed him that he didn't understand logs and he got 90% for his item level. 
<laughs> I'm pumping, bro. I'm pumping. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> and a much lower sample. I brought up how he just wants to gear up his ults. Oh, my God. There is also a rogue that joined that lags so bad she can't do any of the mechanics. She's more geared than half the team, but does half the DPS and disconnects sometimes. Solid, solid roster. Heenan himself has been such a dick in the past that he actually logged off in the middle of our raid because a DPS went tank spec for the trash. Keenan immediately keyed up saying, we don't use three tanks in Nathria and logged off. Well, there it is, I guess. I mean, uh, he's not wrong. I mean, would anybody care having three tanks on trash? Not particularly. He regularly tries to assert himself as what he describes as an alpha male. Son of a bitch, man. It's because I'm, imagine calling yourself unironically an alpha male. <laughs> it's because I'm an alpha male. <laughs> That's why a tank, a tank because I'm an alpha male. You know what I mean? I'm an alpha male. Yeah, I'm, I'm Chadicus Prime, man. I'm Chadicus. <clears throat> He's the kind of guy you all know. If you told a story about how you had an awesome weekend and you caught a five-pound fish, he would butt in and tell you a story about how he tackled a 50-pound fish and yanked it onto his boat and had to punch it in the head to silence it. <clears throat> alpha, by the way. That's what you do when you're an alpha. You punch fish in the head. <laughs> That's what you do. You, you punch that son of a bitch wriggling about on my boat. He actually went into a full rage during the Zoth because Weird Pumpkin suggests he tanks up top and lets the other tank go down. And he took that as an attack on his ability to tank. He started screaming at us for several minutes before admitting it was a good change or he will bitch about having to use Convoke on Sun King. The guy somehow managed to do all 15s in time but can't remember that Shriekwing doesn't have a frontal cone. <laughs> He also hits on every, every lady that joins. And not even in a subtle way. But starts giving them pet names. Oh, no. Ew. Like pumpkin and kitten. Ugh. Oh, no. You know what? I'm glad you guys are all in the same guild together. Like, protect us. I, I beg. I beg. Oh, kitten? Oh, God. He would constantly talk about how sweet his kittens are. Oh, <laughs> ew. <laughs> That's rancid. Oh, my God. And how he will take care of them. Oh, oh, no. Ew. <laughs> oh, God, I feel slimy, man. I need a wash. That's fucking rancid, bro. And they eventually quit or just appear offline during raid nights. Why aren't you kicking him? I don't understand, right? What's going on? We actually lost some good players due to the overall drop in our players' quality, including Weird Pumpkin. The guild used to have calendared M plus nights. But I think right now, only four of our members have a Raider.io score above 80? Eighty? And while Keenan himself does have Keystone Master, he's not quite sure how Prideful works. I am happy to say that the members who left are moving on to Heroic and Mythic Raid teams, and we have used your advice, Preach, if not trying to change the team, but to go and fight a team that suits them. Thank God. My entire life up to this point has just been justified. Sometimes I sit in front of this microphone and I question, am I doing the right thing? Are we doing the right thing? But there it is. There it is. I assume it means 800. Yeah, it must be 800. I mean, 80? What do you get? What do you need to do to get I over 80? That's like Mythic 2, not. <laughs> I've talked to a few of them, and they said once 9.1 hits, they will come back on alts. <laughs> because the place is kind of fun. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> I, can, I can see that. <laughs> the place... Hey, honestly, it's kind of fun. <laughs> If I'm being honest with you, that place is fucking mental. <laughs> it's like going to a Chuck E. Cheese on a kid's birthday party. 
it's kind of all right <laughs> it's kind of good uh, which is good because weird pumpkin and a couple of others were actually getting upset some nights where the group was wiping to bosses that we one shot and drathor and the healer who isn't a raid leader but acts like a raid leader suggested going to harder bosses because clearly we're bored trying to do the easier bosses and that's why we're wiping so if we wipe on Shriekwing, we should go and do Mythic Denathrius. That's the plan. Just so I can understand where we're at here. I'm just trying to... I'm just trying to wrap my, my noodle around it, right? I'm just trying to... Stone Legion Generals, anyone? Who's down? Yeah, Mythic Stone Legion? We down? <clears throat> the boss he was talking about was too difficult was Sun King, but they seemed more chill when they didn't worry about taking charge. The big hit to the guild was the night that Keenan had decided he will be the raid leader. Oh. And by raid lead, it says here in quotations, I mean he will list the group and invite everyone and then go into bosses with creative new strategies he has decided. That of course led to wipes. And then try... Did you mean a... Is this a pug? And then try and use more of the time to get a full group again and pull the boss... Only with recruiting high DPS to carry us. We were at Lady Darkvane Heroic, which we have killed multiple times before, but with a pug tank that liked to tag along until he saw that, much like the final scene of Game of Thrones, this raid was going nowhere. We had Weird Pumpkin setting everything up and Drathor and Keenan in the background making strange suggestions, or saying something like this. We can't have a healer do the bottles, because then they can't heal. Are you talking about moving? Or why are people standing there instead of taking the ads to the boss when the players were rooted? I just sat and whispered. Uh, I just want to point out though, your players were in poor positioning. Like, I'm going to throw that out there. Your players were in poor position to start with. I just sat and whispered to some of the other off other raiders about how this was getting a little ridiculous since we should be smashing this boss to pieces. Weird Pumpkin eventually just told the healers not to worry about the canisters, <laughs> just to appease him, and that he on his melee DPS will do it, much to the protest the protest of Drathor. Drathor and Keenan kept saying, We should just skip Inerva and go to Artificer. Because we have spent an hour on this easy boss. <laughs> you know that's good advice if you can't do Inerva heroic you should just go and do artificer you're gonna have a way better time no yeah you're gonna have a way easier time it's gonna be fine because we spent an hour on this easy boss the response for that was i don't know why we i don't know why we would do that because this boss is literally easier than everything else we can do and we eventually did kill heroic Inerva. it happened that night we then spent an hour on Artificer. Keenan kept running the wrong way. <laughs> we had to assign... <laughs> we had to assign someone to break him out of traps individually. <clears throat> and his rogue friend was supposed to clear the traps, but couldn't. It doesn't explain why they couldn't, but they couldn't. And we had to break our healer out because she would use the wrong cooldown. And then Drathor would get stuck saying she didn't see any of the traps. Perhaps it's a graphics bug. Probably what it is. It's probably a graphics bug. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, for sure. We ended the night on Sun King. Where I shit you not, ladies and gentlemen. With five healers, we could not defeat the Sun King. Not because of the healers... But our DPS was too low. I mean, that doesn't even compute. I think I just crashed mentally. I think I just went full Windows Vista. I'm trying to even... I'm trying to even, like, process and compartmentalize what I just read. <clears throat> we lost? I think we lost. I think it's time to call it a day. Star Wars Galaxies, everybody? Let's go. This is heroic. Uh, it's not the mythic shield. It's heroic. They're stuck up. They haven't got the DPS for heroic Sun King. Which must be a lack of... I'm trying to process this. It must be a lack of healing, right? If you're getting overwhelmed by ads, then you mustn't have the healing. I think you might be a bad raid leader, Arthur. 
No, there's no sh there's no shield there's no shield on mythic, right? There's no shield on, on heroic. I don't think so. Yeah, there's no shield on heroic. So you if you if you're getting overwhelmed by I, I I'm sorry we're stuck on this, but this is fucking boggling my head. It's a lack of healing. It is. You're pushing too late. Drathor kept doing her whole talking over people thing, which Keenan wouldn't let her do, and somehow it led to a political argument in the middle of Sun King wiping and her talking about how she liked both dick and vagina. I kind of want to join the raid. You know what I mean? Don't you guys kind of want to join the raid? Can we sign up for this? I kind of want to be there. A little bit, right? I mean, I kind of want to go. I kind of, yeah, I, I mean, I'm kind of down. <clears throat> Honestly, you've kind of, if this was your, like, if this entire story was your spam message in Orgrimmar, I'd probably sign up. This was the last night our guild killed more than three bosses on Heroic. Aw. There's a moral to this group, is there? <laughs> There's a moral to this story, ladies and gentlemen. There's a moral to the story. Are you ready? If you want to move forward out of a group that is dropping in quality and no longer has the progression you want, then it's easier to move on to greener pastures. And if some of the guys are people who you don't mind playing with, you can likely gear up an alt and kill time in that same group. Again, Preacher, I would like to thank you. Because after moving on to other groups with our mains, five of us have got ahead of the curve and even managed to get into mythic groups. Yeah, to, for clarity... This isn't normal, what you experienced here. There are groups that fall apart. They usually fall apart rather quickly. But this seems like a slow poison death. Uh, if I was to describe how this guild died, it seems very much like you had some minor radiation poisoning and your guild kind of died over months as your hair slowly fell out and your skin degraded, you know? That's what it looks like. Where usually it's kind of cat catastrophic and the guild dies overnight. This was this was much more painful. This was, This was painful. Weird Pumpkin actually recorded his trial and was worried he failed it. <laughs> but he kept going and on progress he went healer and is now looking forward to 9.1 with his new team. Myself and one of the female healers have moved to a heroic team that belongs to a pug. A heroic team that belongs to a pug. What am I reading? A heroic team that belongs to a pug. The fuck does that mean? Like a set pug? Like a heroic team that's a designated pug section. Like a piece of a pie that comes together. Going bald again. Okay. <clears throat> uh, but they're now on break. I have about 10 players on a list that are going to return to Keenan and uh, going to return to Keenan and Drathor and their bastardized team in 9.1 on alts to carry on the legacy of that once great team. And I hope that eventually they get their heads out of their asses. I kind of don't. That's the end of the story there. I kind of don't. The road you just took me on is so painful and riddled with misery that I kind of want it to keep going. Because eventually... Who knows where it could end up, right? Perhaps there's greatness in your future. There's, that's, the, that's the dream I want to have, that there's greatness in your future. I want that in my future. Whew. And for anyone listening who is like, yeah, this sounds kind of normal, it's not. That should never be happening. You shouldn't be trying to buy drugs mid-progress. That shouldn't be a thing, right? That shouldn't be a thing. So if that's happening, just pa skip that. Move on. Yeah? If there's some sort of war of sexuality going on, and you just like, you, yeah, just, you know, just pass. And just re trial somewhere else. That's all I'm saying. All right. <clears throat> Christ, I feel a little sick after that. Uh, the odd demand. <clears throat> What's this one? The odd demand. Uh, any tags here? Oh, okay. We've got a nice, wholesome noob story. We can all kick back and relax and put our feet up. <sighs> Let's just laugh at some noobs, shall we? After that, we're all a bit stressed out. We need to shake it. We need to shake it. shake off the cobwebs and have a nice newbie story about just normal failures. <sighs> Obligatory! I have been a fan of the show for years now, and I decided after listening to so many horrible and hilarious tales, I should write to you one of my own. 
It's a short story that takes place during my first few months of playing World of Warcraft. And I hope that by the end of it, you will still allow me to be a fan for a few more years. Uh, okay, so you're telling me this story is going to be so bad that I might have to somehow ban you from watching me. Hmm. You know, I wish I had that power. Not for you, but, you know, there's a couple of people I can name off the top of my head. Uh, but we'll go forward. My relationship with World of Warcraft began solely because of my older brother. One day, while shopping with our parents in Circuit City. That sounds like an electronic shop. My brother turned and saw a thin brown square package with a picture of an elf looking, elven looking woman on it. Inside that thin square shape was a disc. In that disc was a game. And in that game was another world. One afternoon, after coming home from school, I went into our room and saw that he had installed the game on our personal computer. Our beautiful, praise be, HP tower. Worship it. The pavilion. Light my life. And with our even more beautiful thick boy CRT monitor, he allowed me, in good graces, to sit down on the chair and make my own character. I don't know what this game is. I don't know what this game was about. Or what to even do in it. All I knew was that my brother said it was good. And that meant that I agreed. After some brief deliberation, I created my first ever WoW character. The biggest, strongest, meaning looking character I could ever create in World of Warcraft. A male Tauren warrior. As I began playing the game and slaying tall chickens in the beautiful plains of Mulgo, <laughs> Mulgo, my brother was telling me about this game. He told me about quests, the world, the races, the classes, about he had created a night elf warrior, but soon changed his class when he saw something magnificent, something that changed his mind forever. A night elf with a pet running at his side. A pet? I asked. Yes. He had his own tiger. Log off, delete, Tauren warrior, rest in peace. I sent my Tauren into the void and created my night elf hunter alongside him. I would play the game occasionally whenever I had the chance. I would kill some things, do a quest or two, but mostly I'd just run around taking in the beauty of Darnassus. <laughs> Lucky. My brother, however, would quest, kill mobs, do dungeons, grind like a fucking boss. He would actually play the game. I would watch in awe. I would watch his character grow in level, strength, power. I would watch him as he achieved great feats and he quested in different zones that were beyond the forests. And I would see all of the gold funnel into his bags. I was so jealous. I wanted that for my hunter. Why can't my hunter have a gold coin? But I wasn't going to put in the work for it because that would be crazy. Not because I didn't want to, but because I couldn't. Before you judge me, I simply couldn't. My eight-year-old brain couldn't create a will and discipline strong enough for me to do anything specific for more than half an hour. And back in vanilla, all those days ago, the grind was real, especially for an eight-year-old. But my desire for having gold coins was really strong. So I needed new methods. I needed new methods to achieve my goals. That's right. I would turn to the oldest and most notorious of money-making tactics. I decided to become a street beggar. Aspirations, people. Aspirations. <laughs> I don't want to play the game, but I really want gold. Hmm. <laughs> Motivation all the way to street begging. At some point, I found my way to Darnassus City, which I would explore and eventually station myself by the giant tree in the middle, which was the bank. I would wait there and scout out potential candidates to whom I would beg for money. Whenever I saw someone with a mount, I knew they were rich. If they had badass looking armor, who was levels above me, I would click on their character, right click their portrait, and take it to the pink. May I have gold, please? I would write to them. Sometimes I would get a gold. Other times silver. Occasionally I would just get told to fuck off. I would do this for quite some time. I was very de dedicated to my profession. Day by day, whenever I could play, I would run around Darnassus and eventually make my way to that bank and begin my session of begging. I never got bored of it. 
It was making me money. And it didn't require much effort. So I thought this was the best way to play World of Warcraft. <laughs> My fucking god. One day, however, was not business as usual. One day I whispered the wrong person. May I have a gold, please? I typed. AFK, away from keyboard. He replied. Odd, I thought. I'll try again. I didn't like being spammed in caps lock. May I have a gold, please? AFK, away from keyboard. Same reply. This was the rudest person I'd dealt with yet. I was starting to get very frustrated. But I was not going to be deterred. I decided to whisper him again. Please, may I have a gold? AFK, though? Away from keyboard? I started to get very upset. And I gave in to his demands. <laughs> oh, you think he's asking you to do something? Oh, you dumb fuck. Oh, my God. I see, we were all under the impression, weren't we, that our boy here thought this guy was typing AFK away from keyboard. But that's actually not what's going on. <laughs> he thinks he's being asked to go away from his keyboard. <laughs> we all... <laughs> I was upset and confused, so I gave in to his demands to see if I could get extra gold. Okay, I whispered back to him. I'm away from my keyboard. He replied, AFK, away from keyboard. This scared me a little bit. How could he have known? <laughs> Fucking idiot, man. How does he know? Shit. How could he have known that I was still at my keyboard? <laughs> He's not falling for the plan. <laughs> he knows I'm still here. Wily bastard. I was getting desperate. Even more upset. And honestly, I was starting to get a little freaked out if he could see me through a webcam or something. I did the only thing left to do. I kicked the railing on my desk, rolled back in my, sh my chair, shot my hands up and whispered, Fine! I'm away from the keyboard, man! <clears throat> Nothing. Silence. I looked around to make sure no one saw me in my madness. After a few seconds, I crept slowly back towards my keyboard. He still had not replied. Now, please, can I have a gold? AFK! Away from keyboard! He made the same demands he had already made. I decided to give up. Clearly, I wasn't going to get money from this man and he was wasting my time. I moved on and labeled him as one of the internet weirdos that my mother had told me about. You know what? My kid is like seven and he would not fall for this. Okay? Like, you got to get your shit together. You got to get your shit together for me, son. You got to do it, all right? We got we got to we got to fix this out. We got to fix it out. <clears throat> He started to tell people how to get rid of me. As in the next couple of weeks, I received the same message from a few more people during my begging sessions. I found it odd that so many people would be making these weird demands of me, and eventually it started to make me extra curious. Things just don't seem right. Why would all of these people be making these demands? How many friends did this guy have? And how did they all know that I was lying about not being away from my keyboard? At some point, whether by looking for AFK in Google or just putting two and two together, I realized I was the biggest moron in the world. <laughs> okay, okay, good. He, he Googled it. After, it took you days to Google it. Uh, so I went about my begging after that. <laughs> I stopped at some point, however, and started to actually play the game as intended when I finally got my own account in Wrath of the Lich King. I never begged again after that, so be thankful I stopped. Though, I'm still broke. Thank you, Mike, for reading my story. And hopefully your IQ wasn't lowered too much. Um, I mean... <laughs> I, 
don't I don't think our IQ lowered. No, I think our IQ is just fine. Like we're we're good. We're good. If anything, you opened our eyes to just, you know, some of the people that we deal with in uh in World of Warcraft sometimes. You know. We all assume everybody knows everything. They don't. They really, really don't. They don't at all. Uh no names here. Okay. Fair enough. Alright. <clears throat> Goodbye. Goodbye. Is this going to be sad, Bex? Am I going to cry? I'm more confident in myself now. <laughs> I'm more confident in myself. Uh, good, good. As long as you uh, feel stronger. <clears throat> Hi, Mike, Bex, and Chris, and everyone else who makes Drama Time amazing. I'm more of a WoW enthusiast than a real player these days. Interesting. I made saying the rage from vanilla all the way through to Mr. Pandaria, but those days are long gone now. Somehow, against the background of no life raiding, I got my degrees, got married, passed the bar, got a career, but I still read MMO Champion in the morning and catch up with the big three WoW streamers at night. I work as a legal consultant on a money laundering and terrorism financing hotline. Dude, that sounds sick and boring though, right? That is like a really good job title, but you know that job's kind of boring. Like, it has a really awesome start, and then you just have to fill in a load of paperwork, I gather. Subscribing banks, government, and companies from 45 countries ring us when they have a situation and need advice. Right fucking now. Oh, you charge so much money for this. Oh, you make so much cash. Like crazy. Yeah, you make a lot of money. Oh, your firm makes a lot of money anyway. <clears throat> Calls come into my phone at home, and I can play World of Warcraft during business hours. Okay. The problem is, I can't do anything that requires commitment, as the phone can ring at any time. We charge... Oh, who wants to guess? Who wants to guess how much they charge per minute to call our dude here in this story? Per minute. This is per minute to call this guy and speak to him. How much per minute? All right, you can't go that crazy. It's not 10 grand a minute. Oh, that's some varied numbers. It's not that much, but it still adds up real quick. He charges $75 a minute. $75 a minute. Bruh, that is so expensive. That's crazy. $75 a minute. <clears throat> and as you can imagine, for $75 a minute... The client deserves my full attention. Oh my god, what's gonna happen? And you're just gonna be playing World of Warcraft like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Generally, that means my WoW time is limited to world content. I'm proud, question mark, <laughs> to say I have never missed a single word world quest available on a weekday in the first five months of Shadowlands. Ew. <laughs> okay. Sure. You can only imagine how much anima and stygia I have. More than me. <laughs> That's for sure. My paladin owns the full bastion anima set and my sanctum is rad. A few weeks ago, I logged on in bastion promptly at 8am and opened my map. As usual, there were many important matters that demanded my attention. <laughs> I'm sure there are. There was trouble at the Temple of Humility. I don't even know where that is. <laughs> I have no fucking idea. The big robot on the road near Hero's Rest was once again under siege. Guys riding pterodactyls were assaulting the Temple of Courage. And I had an appointment at flight school to play Flappy Bird. I do know that one. I do know that. From the, I've not done that on live. We only did it during the beta. I followed my normal routine. First, I whipped around the various shrines, collecting my grateful offerings, of course. And then I stopped by Ilios to find out which swole boy had earned today's ripe purian. What is he talking about? Is this some sort of, like, extra thing you can do for rep or something? I have no fucking idea what this is. Ilios, swole boy, ripe purian? What the fuck? From there, the plan was to deliver the, deliver the fruit, do the world quests, swing down to the moor for our Stygia, and then head out to Maldraxxus to complete the rest of our tour. But then, wouldn't you know it, ring, ring, the phone going. On the other end is an agitated casino executive from France. Do I have to do a French accent? Oh, sweet Jesus. He explained that the casino had exchanged some financial instruments for chips for a customer, which is dodgy, but common in his country. Wee oui, wee. Oui. 
And then he had cashed out another customer's chips with the same instruments, which is only legal if you have a financial services license. Complicated, but sure. And that, cust and that customer had carried those instruments home to a powerful third country where they were actually a person of interest. Oh, no. And now an agent of the money laundering regulator of that third country was in his casino lobby with a warrant for the casino's accounts. Are you going to fuck this guy off for Flappy Bird? Because that's, that's hardcore, bro. That's alpha. That's alpha as fuck. Are you going to fuck this guy off for, like, <laughs> Flappy Bird? <laughs> the casino was looking at millions in fines. In fines. Jailed executives. Ag actions against its licenses. Mondeur. <laughs> oh, my God. So I, I asked a few questions about the casino's licensing arrangements, anti-money laundering measures, and decision-making hierarchy. All the while, though, uh, as I listened to this executive stammer who was clearly stressed out at his entire world falling apart, I steered my paladin to Hero's Rest Flight Master and put him, in the, put him on the bird down to the vestibule of eternity. Uh -huh. uh, jail, huh? Millions in fines, you say? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Saudi Arabia, huh? Yeah, well. Uh-huh. Forgets? What? <laughs> in retrospect, I should have used the teleport network, but it never occurred to me with a 5% of my brain still focused on the game. <laughs> Besides, I never could have foreseen the absolute calamity this tiny mistake would cause. Now, I don't know what's going to happen. Well, if this guy goes to jail because you're doing Flappy Bird, we could have foreseen that, actually. We could have. I watched my paladin cruise across the Bastion landscape. I was right in the middle of assuring the executive we would redirect the heat onto some poor employee. You son of a bitch! A scapegoat? When I stopped explaining what we were going to do mid-sentence. My paladin had gone past the flight point, but he didn't get off. He just kept going. <laughs> My camera was stopped at the flight point, but my character was gone. Sailing off over the edge of Bastion and into the western void. Soon he was just a dot bobbing in the distance. Where's my character going? I reached over and started fidgeting with my mouse. Is this guy still on the phone? <laughs> huh. <laughs> the camera panned around the flight master. The focal point was the empty space on the screen that my paladin had occupied for 17 years. <sighs> Monsieur? Hello? Monsieur? Said the executive on the phone. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> I said, snapping back into the room. I decided it would be good practice at this point to turn off my gaming monitor. <claps> Round of applause. Thank you for giving this. I feel bad for the guy who called you, man. <laughs> I feel bad. <laughs> By 11.30, I had solved the casino situation. The regulator agent had been installed in the buffet while my own boss tore apart the warrant, buying a few days for them. Then we brokered an informal deal with a mid-level gaming manager who received a year's paid leave. Son of a bit. Oh, this is so interesting. I'm actually so in on this. This is what they did. All right. They did some bullshit to buy them a few days. Then they made an informal deal with a mid-level gaming manager who's somebody who works at the casino. Who received a year's a year's paid leave in exchange for taking some of the blame for the mistake. Ooh. That's a sweet deal, right? That's a pretty sweet deal. A year paid off work to just say you kind of fucked up sorting the chips out. I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of down. Yeah, I'll take a year off. Well, no, I like my job, but if I if I had a job that I couldn't be fucked about. Oh, it's definitely dodgy, but whatever, right? <laughs> Nobody was going to jail. And most importantly, the casino was safe. Pray, thank God the casinos are safe. I was worried for a moment. The call ended with many French words of gratitude. Wee wee. <laughs> Of course, now back to the issue at hand, though. I turned my gaming screen back on, and to my surprise, I had not been logged out. My camera was still pointing at the flight master. My paladin nowhere to be seen. The sky to the west was misty and empty of paladins. Nothing showed on my map or minimap. My first thought, of course, Hearthstone. But this only produced the you-can't-do-that-in-transit error message. Clearly, the game still thought I was on the flight. Hmm. 
I relog should fix this. I hit escape to log out and got the error message. The same happened when I tried to exit the game. So, Alt F4 it is. Rebooting World of Warcraft, the character select screen showed my paladin in Bastion. But when I logged in, I was still in the same situation. My camera was on the flight master and my character was just gone. I exited the game, gave it a few minutes before logging in again. That didn't work. I tried logging an alt and then back. Nothing. I would have tried war mode. <laughs> you fucking son of a bitch. But well, you know. I do know. I do know. Thank you very much. You asshole. <laughs> Maybe I could get summoned. <clears throat> My whole guild was offline as usual. So I whispered a random warlock and agreed to pay 100 gold for a summon. He invited me to a group. I click accept. But nothing. A group did not form. He invited me again and I clicked accept. Nothing. I invited him. He accepted nothing. I thanked him for trying and sat back in my chair in mystifying mysterious times. Inspiration. I opened the group finder and queued for a random heroic as a tank. It popped instantly. Smiling at my own cleverness, I clicked enter dungeon. Nothing happened. I didn't join a group. I didn't teleport. I didn't get the minimap icon. Curious, I opened the group finder and found I was able to queue again, but the result was the same. Nothing. I furrowed my brow at the screen. Life at the vestibule of eternity carried on. NPCs wandered about. Players passed through on their way to adventure. I watched them stop, pick up quests, repair their gear. I tried a few more solutions as they occurred to me, but nothing helped. Soon a horrible thought entered my mind. Maybe my paladin just didn't want to come back to me. Maybe he thought of yet another day of world quests was that bad that he should just kill himself. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea that your character like is I'm done. I'm fucking done. I cannot take another day of this. <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna just shoot myself off to the void. It seems plausible. It does. Perhaps my paladin had steered himself direct directly into nothingness on purpose. After all, this was a man who had once defeated Ragnaros. Who had crushed Nefarian beneath his boots when the world was new. He had conquered the Black Temple. Led the first firefighter kill on his server. He had saved Azeroth from heroic Deathwing and Pandaria from heroic Garrosh Hellscream. He had rode an Amani Warbear. He was the Justicar, the Immortal and the Hand of Adal. And now I was making him deliver fruit every day. Perhaps he deserved his freedom. Oh, this is so fucking sad. This <laughs> is so sad. I just gotta let you go. I have nothing else to give you. Suddenly I realized I was an idiot, of course. Blizzard had an unstuck function. I'd used it before. I opened the support menu and followed the prompts to Blizzard's stuck character self-service option. I selected my paladin from the list and hit the big red button, ready to game on. An error has occurred at our end, said the page in huge red text. The same message appeared in the next 10 tries. At that point, a guild member had logged in. I explained the situation. He laughed at me and suggested everything I'd already tried. Maybe you need to now wait for the weekly reset, he said. At this point, fuck it. I couldn't care less anymore. I just said, I'll see you on Tuesday then and close the game. To be honest, Mike, I felt very emotional. <laughs> really? Losing my paladin felt like losing a relative or a dog. No. We have been together since I was 15 years old. Aww. I've spent more time with him than I have with my own wife. Fuck, is that true of me? No. No, it's not. That's a weird metric to check, though. Right? It's not. Like, in terms of time, if you just say, like, when I started World of Warcraft and when I met Emma, that's true. But I spend... I've spent much more time with Emma, like, in terms of time spent... Right? I'm justifying my... Don't judge me! I can't help I started World of Warcraft before I met my wife, right? I was already married when I met her. Uh, Wait. And I've been married 17 years. Do the math. Still have to think about it. Do a slash plane on Emma. <laughs> I did. I should do a slash plane on my wife. It's, it just says an error has occurred. <laughs> I spent more time with him than I have with my own wife. It's actually not even close. <laughs> That feeling stuck with me all day. My wife actually could tell something was bothering me. Oh, I love that you're in bed like this. He thinks you're cheating on her. 
Doesn't she? She totally thinks she cheated on it. My wife could tell something was wrong. I explained. Oh no. You tried to explain it. <laughs> Her response was, as you can imagine. I understand that you've lost your man. Can't you just make a new man? No. No. My last glimpse of my beloved paladin occurred after the next reset. I logged in and to my surprise, I was no longer in the vestibule of eternity. Instead, my camera was in the void with my paladin. He was mounted on a skyworm and looked as good as ever. But he was still going. With my camera stuck in place, I was unable to follow him. I took you the screenshot of what I, t what I saw as he departed. Here it is. Okay, let me make sure I got this set up right. Yep. Can we salute? 15 years of traveling. This is this man now. We salute your commitment for everything you have done. God bless. God bless. And may one day you return to the world, my friend. One day you'll come back to us, I'm sure. For those audio listeners, we just have a shadow of a paladin riding a worm. <laughs> That's all we have in the void. As my paladin flew away from me, I knew in the pit of my stomach that this this is it. It's over. This is the end. I knew that the life I could offer was no longer enough for this paladin. My paladin had outgrown me. And I was never getting him back. Onward and onward he flew, never turning back. Out loud, I said goodbye to him. I typed slash wave into my box. And it appeared that he was going to wait. And he appeared to wave back at me. <laughs> and I actually like ran a tear down my face. I'm not joking. Oh. Since that day it has occurred to me that maybe I could contact Blizzard. And get them to sort my paladin out. Playing the lawyer card if necessary. I don't think you need to be a lawyer to get a character unstuck. I don't think you need to go legal with them. Or maybe patch 9.1 will magically restore him to his half point. But after this experience, I feel strange making my paladin farm Stygia and deliver fruit and be a waiter for vampires again. I respect his decision, you know. I respect that he decided to leave. I hope he finds the adventure he seeks on the other side of the void. Besides, fuck it, I'm playing Final Fantasy XIV now and it's really fun. <laughs> the end. <laughs> the ending is crisp. <laughs> fuck it. <laughs> after all, fuck it. <laughs> yeah. Play Final Fantasy 14. <laughs> oh man, that is a solid ending to a fantastic drama time. I had a blast with these stories today. Fucking hell. Oh, that was funny. Oh, I love the idea that your character decided to peace out on the Shadowlands, man. I love it. Thank you to all our authors and thank you to our wonderful live audience for being here. As as always, you guys make this show what it is. There's a big reason we have this box here, because you guys join in and you make it so much more fun. Uh, especially for those guys who come back and check it and see the history of all these things. I'm going to love you and leave you. I have got my cheat meal waiting for me, I think. I'm th pretty sure I heard it arrive while we were doing drama. Mm, so it's probably waiting for me. 9.1 next week, guys. It's going to be busy for those of us playing WoW. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be fun. Brand new raid. Let's see what bugs uh, Team USA run into as the preparation for the Race to the World first gets underway. And you know I'll be keeping a keen eye on that. I'm also having hair transplant surgery uh, on Tuesday the 6th. So we probably won't have drama that week. I'm just letting you know. Because, uh, you know, I'll be have a scabby head. <laughs> Other than that, be good, guys. And I will see you as soon as I can. All right? Bye-bye. Press the button. <laughs>